Hey guys, this is Austin, and here are the coolest things from CES 2016. Kicking things off is one of the big surprises of this year's show, the Razer Blade Stealth. Razer has been making solid laptops and accessories for years now, but the Stealth is different in a few ways. This is a 12.5 inch Ultrabook with some serious style. It's all aluminum coming in at just over half an inch thin with an individually backlit keyboard that's fully adjustable depending on what you're doing. The base model comes with a QHD display, but you can upgrade it to full 4K, which looks fantastic on a 12 inch screen. Driving all those pixels is a dual core Skylight Core i7 processor and eight gigs of RAM, but along the side is a USB-C based Thunderbolt 3 port for expanding your graphics horsepower. The Razer Core is an add-on that supports a full desktop graphics card that turns your thin Ultrabook into a full-fledged gaming PC. It has its own power supply for a dual slot card up to 375 watts, which means it should work with nearly any card out there, and it also features gigabit ethernet and four USB ports. This has been tried before, but the idea of plugging a single Thunderbolt cable in to both charge your laptop and give you some serious graphics is awesome. Better yet, while the pricing for the core hasn't been announced, the Razer Blade Stealth starts at $1,000, which is really awesome for what you get. Something that's not reasonably priced are the Sennheiser Orpheus headphones. These aim to be the best headphones you can buy, period, and with a price tag of over $50,000, they hit better. The presentation really is next level. The components are housed inside a solid block of marble with motorized knobs and tube amps, which is really an entire show on its own. Look at the headphones themselves, and they're solidly built, but nothing crazy to look at. It's only when you put them on do you realize just how insane they sound. Each instrument is absurdly clear, with a soundstage so wide, it sounds like you've stuck your head in the studio. You can probably get 90% of this experience at a fraction of the price, but what Sennheiser have done to go the last 10% is incredible. Another over-the-top piece of tech at CES this year was the LG 98-inch 8K TV. While 4K is becoming fairly mainstream at this point, 8K is an entirely different animal. LG focused on photos for the demo, which makes sense. While 4K comes in at 8 megapixels, 8K is a massive 33 megapixels per frame, and almost no video camera can handle that just yet. To be fair, if this was on a smaller TV, the difference would be hard to spot, but at 98 inches, there is a noticeable difference. If this isn't crispy, I don't know what is. Another big product is the Oculus Rift. Unlike the last few years where we've seen prototypes, this is the consumer version that you can order today. Not only does it have some of the best optics and screens in a VR headset, but it also comes with a positional tracker to place you in a 3D space, a remote for navigating the space, along with an Xbox One controller for gaming. Later in the year, they also have an Oculus Touch controller, which is designed specifically for VR. At $600, the Rift isn't cheap, but I'm looking forward to testing it in depth soon. Something I wasn't expecting was the Royal X head-mounted display. Unlike the Oculus, which requires a powerful PC and is aimed more at gaming, the Royal has everything you need built into a small unit, including the processor, memory, and battery. Inside are a pair of super thin displays and built-in headphones that give you a personal screen for watching video and movies. It works well, although the screens don't take up your full field of view, they're sharp and vibrant, and it also has an HDMI port, so they will work as a display for basically anything, including a game console. If you want to bring the reality up a notch though, you could get a full vehicle rig from Sigma Integral. While it might not fit in your living room, these simulators mount an actual car on a series of platforms which are controlled by the game you're playing. It uses the steering, pedals, and gauges of a car, which paired with a triple screen setup and a gaming PC, makes for one crazy rig. Something a little outside the box is the Mercedes Concept IAA. This is definitely a future thing rather than something that's going to be on sale anytime soon, but not only does it look crazy, but it's designed to be one of the most aerodynamic cars out there. It's filled with tech which actually isn't too far off from production, but seriously, just look at this. Damn. Coming back down to earth for a minute, we've got some retro action with the Kodak Super 8 film camera. While digital is essentially made film obsolete, it's still stuck around for movies, and Kodak hopes that a more reasonably priced camera might just stick. This is a prototype, but it's close to what will be on sale later this year. You'll purchase the film from Kodak, shoot on it, then send it back to be developed, and you'll get a 4K video file uploaded to the cloud. It might not be all that practical, but at around $400, it might just be worth checking out. Something that absolutely is practical is the LG Gram 15. This is a thin and super light laptop weighing in at just over a kilogram, not including the cable. It's got a 15 inch 1080p screen, which while not crazy high resolution, is sporting super thin bezels that force the webcam to be located on the bottom. Playing around with it for a few minutes, it's clear that it's plastic, but the specs are solid, including a Core i5 or i7, all SSD storage, and a USB-C port along the side. Between the Surface, iPad Pro, and Pixel C, there's been no shortage of high-end tablets, and now Samsung has jumped in with the memorably named Galaxy Tab Pro S. This is most similar to the Surface with an Intel Core M processor and full Windows 10, but it does include the keyboard cover in the box, which is an almost mandatory accessory on the Surface, and Samsung has a nice implementation here with a solid keyboard and trackpad. It also has a fantastic looking 12-inch 1440p AMOLED display that at a quick glance is going to be hard to compete with. 
It's also sporting a USB-C port, which works with a Samsung dock, along with the new T3 portable SSD. On top of all of this awesomeness, my buddy John took a look at the weirdest tech of CES, so if you want to see us explore the show, definitely be sure to go check out his video. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.